Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, handy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. So when drawing with ink, it, it is always a question of how much do I draw and how much do I leave out? And, and how do I draw that? How do I draw that surface? So my viewer says, oh, I know it's a leaf or it's a rock or it's whatever it is. And so um, I, I'm just gonna go through and just give you a couple little pointers. Um, a lot of it has to do with the way you apply your pen and with the value that you put your pen gets. The closer your lines are, the darker the value. And there's still a ton of stuff that you want to leave out. So I'm just going to throw in this little, this little space here. Here's my little tower. I'm just doing this with my pencil. And a good thing about drawing uh, inanimate objects like this is that uh, you're not really concerned if the proportions are exact or perfect. Later on, we're going to be drawing things like faces and people and those things you do. So I'm just throwing in some basic shapes of what I see. And if they're not in the exact right position, that's okay. This pencil is just a guideline for us. We can we can change this. Now, if you wanted to put in like where the the, the shines are in the water, you could block that in real basic too. But don't don't be too concerned about it. It really is just a mirror image of your object. So you can do something kind of like that. Sometimes you get tangents where one shape runs into another. And so right here where the kind of, there's kind of a, a shoreline over there, it kind of runs into our, our thing over here. And I don't much care for that, that tangent. So I'm gonna move it. Um, I have that option. I can go up or down with it. I think I'll just go up just a little bit so that it's not in the crook of that. I just, I'm gonna move it up a little bit like that. So that I don't get that tangent in there. Um, sometimes you don't get to choose when you take a picture of something where your tangents are. But as an artist, you can add them and subtract them and move them around so that you do get to choose. And then from there, I mean, everything else I can, I can apply with my pen. Remember, everything that you've drawn in just now gets erased. And so don't get attached to that drawing. We've drawn with the side of our pencil so that it's superficial. It's on the surface, easy to get rid of. And now we can go back into it with our pen and do a little drawing. Where do you start? Uh, that's a good question, and it's one that often gets asked that. Where do I start? I don't know. I just start and keep going. So I'm going to start with the tower. Uh, I usually go left to right kind of a thing. And so instead of drawing a line all the way around the tower, I'm going to use the texture of the brick or the rock, as it were, and the leaves and everything to define the tower. So no lines around anything. Um, I might use some little uh, dashed lines or some crosshatched or, or something. But for, for right now, I'm just going to start kind of up at the top and say, well, there's a little rock right there. There's another little rock here, and I'm just going to scribble this in. Let me zoom into it so you can see what I'm doing. So these are just little scribbles. You can go back and forth like this and do little hatched lines. You can do little dots. You can do just little zigzags up and down like this. However you want to do it, the idea is that we're just laying in ink trying to get it as dark as we want it to go by the closeness of our line. 
if we've got something that isn't so dark, maybe we want to just do a couple little dots and dashes. Here's another rock. Now you can you can do these little U shapes or little dots and dashes like this. Um, just skip along the surface however you want to do it. This rock is fairly dark over there, so maybe I'm going to say, well, it's dark here. I'm going to hatch through it. And there's this dark shape right there. Well, I don't like those hatch lines. They don't look very good. So I'm going to go back over it with some other little lines and dots and dashes and scribbles and whatever. And all those little hatch lines did at first for me just created a little darker value. Now, when you're doing like a building or something like that, you've got some definition here in these little crenellated tops here. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of that definition there with some dots and dashes, little squiggly lines back and forth. And you're just looking at the rock going, you know, how big are those rocks? Are they big or are they fairly small? These on top are fairly small. I have some larger ones on the bottom. And this is just kind of a little practice thing. You just kind of go through and just, you know, how much do I need in there? I can always come back in and add more later on. Don't draw a line to define it. Just do your little edges. And where your little dots and dashes stop, that's the edge of our construction, of our building, of whatever this is. Just allow those edges to take care of themselves. And notice I'm not going in the same direction. I'm not even using the same kind of line. Just dots and dashes, and sometimes they just kind of shake and let it take care of itself over there. And again, I'm just using the inspiration of what I see to try and get the right value of the dots and dashes. This uh, right side is a little lighter than the, the left side. So as I go through the left side, I might do a little bit more line over here and less line over here. And it's a conscious thing. And you might say, well, some of those are kind of dark over there. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and put those in, little crosshatched, little dots and dashes, whatever it takes to give it that texture. The closer the line is together, the darker the shape. So again, I, sometimes my pen doesn't even touch the surface. I, I kind of shake and let it go as I as I move my pen around. That's kind of what I call a meandering line. It's kind of just wherever it goes. But I'm looking at the rock. I'm looking at the direction that the darks and lights are. I'm trying to get that feeling in there. little craggly stones that are in there. And if it's fairly light and you think, well, gee, maybe there's a little dark edge there, you can just very lightly put it in and then 
crosshatch through it. There's another rock up here that's a little lighter. Let's throw that in. I'm not trying to get every little rock. If I had more time, I would. Maybe, but... We're just trying to get the essence of the object that we're looking at. I like to clean up my edges to just make sure that they're nice and level or straight. Sometimes you don't need much edge. So like on this left side that's really, or it's left, our right side, that's very light, I can just put in a few little lines like this. And if I got rid of all my graphite, all that stuff that I did there, got rid of all that graphite, you can tell where that edge is without me drawing it in. So, and you can leave it out, or you can say, eh, I need a little bit more in there. You can put a little dot or a dash in there or something if you want, but just leave that edge out. Just let it go. Now, there's all these little vines that are creeping up and crawling all over here, and those are kind of fun. So I'm going to attack those a little bit differently than I did these rock. I'm going to be a little more um, consistent with my edge, with my line. So they're leaves. So uh, maybe I'm going to do these little kind of U-shapes like this that are just kind of crawling up in there. or W shapes or whatever they are. And and all of a sudden people go look at that and go, oh, I get it, it's, it's a leaf. And so I'm just a little more consistent in the line that I do. And therefore that texture comes through. Whereas here with the rock, I'm not as consistent, but then those rocks aren't consistent. There are bumpy ones and smooth ones and dark ones and light ones. But the leaves, they're a little more consistent. And if it's really light, just leave it out. little dark shape and you just hatch through it however you want to do it you can do little circles or I just do little hatched lines so I'm going to just buzz through this really quick and finish that texture that's in there and you don't have to put it all the way in. They don't have to connect to each other. You're just explaining to your viewer what that thing is made out of with the least amount of line possible. And there are many, many ways to do this. I'm just showing you one of the techniques. Where those leaves are, the top ones are very light. So I'm going to just leave those out. Maybe do I, like I did over here. Do a few little bumpies that just say, you know, these are leaves. And then just leave the rest out if you want to. Or you can come back in later on and put some, some more little edges, lines.
If it's dark, you could start out with those little hatched lines and then go back into it with the same kind of texture. Rule of thumb when you're doing trees is the, the leaves on the top kind of do M's and N's and on the bottom you're doing U's and W's. So if it's facing down, you're doing little W shapes. And again, just go ahead and leave out your edges. Just let them fly. They're just on their own. Happy little edges. little textures it's all about texture texture and value because it's the the darkness the shadows that define your form whatever it is you're drawing and the lights already there now this whole section is fairly dark what if I just hatch through the whole section? That tells me where where all that darkness is, and then I can go back into it and add more or less. And I'm not always going in the same direction. I like to fan out things, like, like in the top if I'm doing a, a tree, like this other side over here. Those would be little M's dots and then the bottom they're used where those light rocks are that are there just leave them out do your little edges and just leave them out they'll come through Here's that little shadow underneath. There's one over there. There's a little shadow of those rocks there. Ink drawing is a lot of fun. Uh, because you're not... I don't know. There just isn't a lot of pressure to get everything perfect. Uh, at least in my, in my view, I... They're just little shapes of, shapes of dark and light. The light's already there, so you're just putting in the dark. You don't have to draw every little rock. Just do a few of what you feel like you need. You and always come back in later, add a few little dots and dashes. Here's some rock along the shore. Usually the shoreline, because it gets wet, it's a little darker. Sometimes it gets um, moss on it or uh, discoloration from minerals and things like that. So it goes a little darker. Here's a rock over here. Just do that shadow there. A little shadow on the other side. And everybody makes that connection that this is a shape. You don't have to draw it. You don't have to give them that information. They got it. Visually, people, I think, are a little more intelligent than we, we as artists give them credit for. So sometimes you have to let them see things on their own without giving them all the information that you think they need. Makes it a little more interesting. And that's what pen and ink does for you. So there's more that we could do in there. Um, and if we got time, we can come back into it. I want to show you how to do these reflections down in there. 
They're very much like you do up in here where you pick out the darks and just leave the rest of it out. But because water is very horizontal, it's very level, all your lines are gonna go back and forth like this. So watch me do it and then you can, you can do this. A um, little dark edge over here. I'm just going to go back and forth like this, back and forth. And I just kind of me meander back and forth. Here's some more back and forth. Just kind of, you know, it's like trying to follow a, a drunk cat, you know, just back and forth. You're never sure exactly where it's going to go. You just let your pen just kind of skip across the surface and do those dark areas, those little dark shapes. And don't be afraid to leave some light out. The closer you get to the bottom of your page or to the viewer, you can your little strokes can be a little bit broader, a little wider. You know, it makes the the waves look a little bit larger as they're getting closer so that's your water isn't that easy the easiest water you've ever drawn and if you think well it's 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 kind of dark over here too you can put a little bit of that in there but not as much just a little bit back and forth Okay, we can go back in there too. And if it's a little darker in places in the water, you can just go back into it with the same kind of line. And it'll it'll darken it up. It'll darken in that area a little bit. And you just do it as much as you want to until it has the effect you want it to have. And you, you kind of feel like it's just scribbling. All I'm doing is scribbling. But isn't that really what drawing is? You're making a mark on a piece of paper and or, or, or board or something and hopefully those marks relay a message to your viewer that it is a thing. It's all about communication, visual communications. Okay, does that make sense? Now, all the trees in the background, piece of cake here. You're doing the same thing you did up here, but less of it. And so the little rocks that are back in there, dots and dashes, less of it. This area that's fairly dark in there, a couple little dots and dashes and just less line. It's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit farther away. So it's going to be fuzzier, hazier, less line, less detail. There's a little tree back in there. My line, I'm doing the same thing. They're just spread out. They're just not as close together. A little tree over here. There's the tree trunk. And now I'm going to do the little leaves. There's less of them. It's the same thing, just less. And there are no dark edges around anything in the background. Because again, you're just telling the viewer, hey, there's trees back there, or grass, or rocks, or whatever it is. There's dots and dashes, and you're just doing less of it. In this case, less is more.
I just even just barely letting my pen skip across the surface and do these little dots and dashes. But as a viewer, you can look at that and go, oh, okay, I, I know what's going on back there. There's rocks and there's trees and things without having to do all those little details. I'm going to sit here and draw a little bit more, just because just I hate leaving this area unfinished. But technically, that's it for that little mini lesson. Just little dots and dashes and little shapes. And you just want to get in that texture and the values. And you can keep adding as much line as you feel like you need to, but word to the wise, you got to know when to stop. Less is more sometimes. Sometimes you have to just go, yep, I'm done. Not going to do any more. And don't expect little tight details. I mean, you think I'm drawing all these little tight details, when in reality, I'm really not. I think drawing buildings and old craggly things are fun. Sometimes that graphite gets in my way and I'm like, oh, I hate that graphite because it makes it look dirty at the end. You get rid of your graphite and then it just cleans it all up, brings back that nice edge. We were doing a little fantasy drawing of this. You could make this little tower into a person. It's got little little eyes and a little mouth. The old man of the lake. I think the biggest thing is, is what do you leave out? You know, we always kind of second guess ourselves and say, well, 
I need to put more in there. Sometimes you have to just stop and go, nope, that's it. It has been good to draw along with you today. And remember, art makes life better. <laughs>